Lesson 11, we are multiplying a decimal fraction by a single digit whole number relate to a written method through application of the area model and place value understanding and explain the reasoning used. So take a look at a couple of things here. So the first thing they're asking us to do is to, first thing, we're going to draw a disk on a place value chart. Then we're going to write an equation. And then finally, we're going to express our product in standard form. So let's take a look at those three things here. So first, our place value chart, we know that we only have tenths. So now how many tenths do we have? And that's the question. We have four copies of three tenths. One, two, three. That's one copy of three tenths. One, two, three. Two copies. One, two, three. That's three copies of three tenths. One, two, three. Four copies of three tenths. Now, if you notice here, we have three, six, nine, twelve tenths. And we said that each place value unit, our tenths is one of those place value units, can only hold one digit, a zero through nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I can't put 12 in my tenths place. So what I'm going to have to do here is take 10 of those tenths, and I'm going to regroup them as decimal point. I'm going to regroup those 10 tenths as one whole. So I'm going to get rid of these 10. And now I have one whole and two tenths. So let's go ahead and take care of the second part. We know we have four times three tenths. Not three, but three tenths. And we know four times three would be 12. So four times three tenths is 12 tenths, which is equal to one and two tenths. And four. All right, next they're asking us to complete the area model and then find the product. So let's go ahead and flip a new page here. And we have three times nine and 63 hundredths. So we know when we're making our area model, I'm just gonna add a few things here that they don't have that I like to have in my area model. We know that once we find our partial products, we're going to add them together to get our final product. So we have three times nine ones, six tenths, and three hundredths. So nine ones, six tenths, three hundredths, filling that in. And what I like to do is write it in unit form, and then I'm going to write it in standard form underneath the line. So we know that. 3 times 9 is 27, and that's 1. 3 times 6 is 18, so it's going to be 18 tenths. That's 3 times 6 tenths is 18 tenths. This is important because we're going to have to convert this back to standard form. And then we have 3 times 3 hundredths is 9 hundredths. So now 27 ones is just going to be 27. 18 tenths is not 18 in the tenths place. Your 8 has to be in the tenths place, which is going to be the same as 1 and 8 tenths. Same thing, this 9 has to be in the hundreds place. So we have 0 in our ones place, 0 in our tenths place, and 9 in the hundreds place. So now we have to take these three numbers and add them up. Since we have a number all the way out to our hundredths, I like to do that with all three numbers. So let's take that 27 and make it all the way out to the hundredths place. Take our 1 and 8 tenths and make it the same thing, but we're going to rename it. And then we have our 9 hundredths. Add that up. We have 9 hundredths, 8 tenths, 8 ones and two tenths for our final product of 28 and 89 A couple of key points when you are doing your partial products we had our ones make sure that you understand that this is in your ones place and this is in your tens place we have a lot of students who are adding this up and they're not putting that seven in the ones place or that two in the tens place. Same thing here, especially with the tenths. We have students who are writing this 18 tenths as 
1800s. That's incorrect. You have to make sure your decimal is in between your ones place and your tenths place. 18 tenths is saying that we had one dollar and eight dimes, which is the same thing as 18 dimes. All right. So keep that in mind. And of course, the same thing with the hundredths. You have your nine and your hundredths place. If you notice, when I completed this here, my place value units all line up. I have my hundredths. I have my tenths. I have my ones. And I have my tens. So all my place value units line up. And it's no confusion as to if I'm adding correctly. Once again, hope this helps you. Please like and subscribe. I'm doing these videos to help you. Watch it till you understand it. If you still don't understand it, come to back to class, ask questions until you get this. Once you have it, it's yours, you own it. It's important to make sure that you own these concepts.